Hello viewers, welcome back to Top Notch Online TV. Uh, with you today is me, Teacher Emis from Alliance Girls High School. And uh, with me is Teacher Rispa from PCA Kikuyu High School. Uh, in our previous session, we looked at an analysis of uh, a man of awesome powers as well as the themes that are developed in the same story. In our session today, we are going to look at sample executions uh, from the same story, A Man of Awesome Powers, and uh, those sample questions are in our book, uh, Top Notch Guru. Uh, Top Notch Guru, uh, English Guru. Uh, we are discussing the essays that are in this uh, set text. So, Teacher Rispa, mm -hmm. uh, start us off with the first uh, sample of the essay question. Yes, uh, we are about to tackle a sample question, but before we do, maybe just as a reminder to our viewers, what we said, what kind of introductions, if you're not familiar with that, you can go back to our previous presentations, you see, what type of introductions do you want to see? Uh, four main uh, points in the body, a conclusion, and you think you're set. But before you do that, you also need to understand the question and the question that I'll be making reference to, I'll be taking the question from English Guru. I'll be making reference to page 323. Page 323, the question comes in this. Let me quote the question. The question is Power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Power corrupts, absolute power corrupts absolutely. And this is not a this is something you've ever had. It is a quote that has always been had. Now we are using that quote and putting it into, into context, uh, referring to a man of awesome powers. The question continues. Write an essay in support of this statement, drawing illustrations from the story, A Man of Awesome Power by Naguib Mahfouz. Uh, so that I can relate to our previous, uh, our previous engagement, First of all, even before we can tackle the introduction, let's look at what is required of the question. How are we interpreting the question? What do you understand? We are talking about someone gaining power, and then because of that power, it makes them to uh, use it for the wrong. And if I explain it like that, teacher Emis, we are narrowing it down to a specific character who is? Yes. We are narrowing it down to a specific character. We are talking about Taib al, al Mahfuz. Okay. Al Mahdi, right. sorry. Right. We are narrowing it down to Taib al Mahdi. The introduction can come in very many ways. Maybe you can just sample one among them. You can go to the, uh, to the paraphrase type of introduction. Power corrupts, absolute power corrupts, absolutely. To a student when you're coming up with the introduction, what have you understood? What are you being asked? In your own words, as you try to explain, you already have an introduction and you can say, when someone has a position of uh, when someone has a position of an advantage, when someone is an is, is at an advantageous position, some people tend to take advantage of that position and use it to harass other people. That is power, and we've shown that it corrupts absolutely. We can still go back to a contextualized type of introduction, and you can talk about uh, Taib, and you talk about Taib was a man who was religious, he spent a lot of time, uh, he used to be someone who was contented with his life. Later on, he gained a power where he can tell things to happen and they happen. And from then onwards, he began to use his power for the wrong reasons. I've just given two of our types of introductions and you can still have other types of introductions. Then we go to our point number one. We already have understood that. We are talking about Taib one. And we are looking at the instances in which Taib is putting his power to wrong usage. Anytime that we are in our plot analysis, we are talking about he could even cover up some portals. That one, you are not looking at it. You are in interested in the instances this man is misusing his power. My first point comes in this. I'll talk about, first of all, we look at Taib misusing his power when he bursts the tires of the taxi driver. That is our topic sentence. Then from the topic sentence, let's develop it using illustrations. We are now explaining how was that a misuse of power. And in the explanation, I will say that he had hailed a taxi, but the, man had, uh, but the taxi driver had indicated he was not going to pick Taib as a passenger. 
The reason behind the taxi driver declining to pick Taib, you're not being told it is a bad reason. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the author is even particular that it is a normal. It is a normal occurrence. It happens once in a while. Therefore, there was no need of Taib getting angry. But then he decides, you have decided not to stop. I'll make you stop by force. Don't you know that I have a power? And then he wheels the tires. Uh, he wheels the uh, he wheels the tires of this man's taxi, and they end up uh, they end up getting bust getting busted. Therefore, the man is forced to stop. And is, as he is uh, analyzing his vehicle, uh, maybe to rate the damage, how much damage has my vehicle uh, encountered? Tai, we see Taib is even going over there pretentious, asking him, could, could I be of any help? And when the man declines, we still see Taib was even not willing to help. He goes, he sits back with some kind of satisfaction that he has put the man in his place. The kind of satisfaction we are now seeing the man is using his power in the wrong way. Therefore, we are able to say that power has corrupted Taib. Another point you are looking at, when you are talking about Taib and He's uh, using his powers in the wrong way. We shall be looking at an inc incident where he waits at a bus stop. And as he's waiting at the bus stop, he encounters a man and a woman who are locked in some kind of argument, who are in a conflict. As he's still observing the man and the woman, what happens? The man slaps the woman. He'll, uh, the uh, time decides, I've already become the judge and the jury. That man is on the wrong. Why should he slap the woman? I'll punish the man. He could still have used his powers to will the man into doing something right, even like apologizing. Yeah. But instead of will, uh, doing such a thing, now going back to the book, exactly what happened. He makes the man to develop severe stomach cramps. And the stomach cramps do not relent. They continue. They make the man uncomfortable. To an extent, the man needs to be ferried to the hospital. He needs to be ferried using a... An ambulance. Therefore, even look at the intensity of the punishment. Yeah. He punished and then to a certain extent that is severe. He is using his power in the wrong way. We've seen that his uh, time, the power has corrupted him. Another instance, on to my third point. We are looking at Taib as he is sipping coffee in a certain cafe. On the TV comes a man. Uh, on the TV comes a man who is uh, who is uh, propagating lies according to Taib? Lies according to Taib. He's talking about future developments. And Taib knows very well that these uh, developments, they never come to materialize. Why is this man lying to the people? Uh, there was an instance where his conscience maybe was seeping in and it was telling this person, challenge him, ask him, how much of this development have we been able to actualize? How much of this development have we seen? But then, Another instance tells him to, ah, there's an easier way, there's a shortcut. I can make this man shut up about it. I can make this man sneeze over and over until his broadcasting is deterred. He can no longer speak and it brings an end his, his broadcasting. Uh, in, in Taib's view, it brings an end to his lies. He can no longer continue to lie to people. And you're being told, apart from that particular broadcaster, Whenever Taib felt that someone was, was telling people something he didn't like, he would make the person encounter uncomfortable situations even, going to the extent of making the person diarrhea. And he will bring to a halt whatever the, the person's mission, that is another way, power corrupts, you've gone up to three points. Another point that you look at with Taib uh, becoming corrupt because of his newly found power, we are seeing that Taib watches a man called Suleiman. Suleiman has, uh, has been surrounded by psychophantic devotees and followers. Uh, Suleiman has been a person who has been exempted from taxes. And we might look at it, and this is uh, Taib's lucky, but Taib must be among the people who are, mis uh, who, are also, uh, who are in with the government, therefore they are enjoying some privileges that are illegal. Why should it, a citizen of a certain country be... Uh, be paying taxes all taxes is for any person who is working mm -hmm. but then the point on mrs of power is not really on suleiman but then the fact that suleiman has uh psycho funds and is being e exempted from taxes we are seeing that it displeases taib mm -hmm. now the part of him being displeased and then he realizes ah but i can make this man also i can 
force his will. I can make this man go and confess to the authorities he has been evading taxes. You make a man in some kind of a stupor. The man is not in his normal self. But in that stupor, he goes and accuses himself. You can imagine you are being made to go and accuse yourself out of your, uh, beyond your will. And then after that, also to be made to pay up all the taxes that he has evaded. But that one is all being controlled by Taib. Therefore, we are seeing another instance as point number five, where Taib uses his power in a corrupt way. Finally, as we are looking at Taib, we still have another fifth point, even though four points will suffice. Four points will be enough, but then we can have a fifth point so that you're also dealing with that essay uh, from all angles. Finally, we are looking at Taib using his power to engage in lust. His newly found power, he uses it to satisfy his lust. He encounters a woman, a woman at a garden, and the outlook of the woman pleases Taib. That woman is, uh, that woman is beautiful. I, and he now decides, let me make use of my power. I'll make that woman fall in love with me. He had already fallen in love with that woman. He had converted. He was already, in fact, co committing a sin of being covetous. He is converting another person. And even if it is whichever religion, if he was interested in this woman, even if it is a religion that allows for polygamy, he could have gone ahead and married the woman and put it in a clear view of the wife. I'm marrying maybe a second wife. But he does it secretly. He uses his power, wills the woman to equally fall in love with him and they walk off together. In other words, they, they're walking off together. These people go and engage in some kind of, in some kind of romantic relationship. But then even the, the kind of relationship you're seeing Taib is now becoming a corrupt person. We Putting into consideration the beginning of the book, this man was a person who used to heed to his conscience. He was also a man who was religious. And even among the, uh, among the religious teachings, we are not supposed to be committing adultery. But he falls, uh, he falls to the sin of committing adultery. And to make it worse, he does not keep the woman. After he has satisfied his needs, he goes back to his wife and he even tells the wife a lie to cover, to, uh, he even tells the wife a lie to cover up for his mistake. Yeah. Taib, you're not looking at your normal self. What is ailing you? The man lies to her face. I'm having a cold. And even you're seeing, uh, to, to, be, uh, uh, to emphasize that what Taib had done was wrong, we are seeing that after his sin of the flesh, after engaging in that adultery, he loses his power. Therefore, we are seeing that power has really corrupted Taib. He's no longer using his power in the right kind of way. As you're coming to a conclusion, now that you've dealt with the body, in fact, you've been uh, able to give even as many as five points. Coming to the conclusion, you can do this. We can decide to summarize the points that you have dwelt with in the body. We can talk about, from the above argument, looking at Taib, who has engaged in adultery, he burst the, power, uh, he burst the wheels of the of the driver who refused to uh, who refused to take him as a customer. He made Suleiman in a stupor to go and confess his sins. And even he talk about making the person to have severe, uh, severe sneezing yeah. are all examples to prove that power corrupts, absolute power corrupts absolutely. You give a summary of what you said, and then to add it, uh, to add on to it, you go back to quoting the the initial question. We can still have another type of uh, conclusion. You can just give a point of advice. You can talk about from Taib's incident, we advise, we advise people that whenever they are in a position of power, make use of your power in their moral ways to avoid the power being snatched from you later. That is it about power corrupting and in reference to a man of awesome powers. I think from there, teacher Amy's can take over, also can give us a sample of a question on power, uh, sorry, on a man of awesome powers. Uh, thank you, teacher Rispa. Our learners, I hope you're following closely. So that uh, was a sample uh, essay uh, from our book, Guru, English Guru and also from our story, A Man of Awesome Powers. I'm also going to give a second sample essay, um, a 
sample of an essay from the same same story and remember what we said our learners that uh, uh, a story uh, is not as developed the plot line of a short story is not as developed as uh, the plot line of a novel so you realize that most of these essay questions in one way or the other touch on the same content they are related the content is related so it feels like you keep on repeating yourself but there is a, a difference in these essay questions and that is now where the examiner wants to see if you can uh, uh, notice the difference if you can actually interpret the questions uh, correctly so as much as these questions sound related uh, know that uh, each question has an aspect that is being tested so as a student read the questions carefully understand them carefully so that you can have a good interpretation of the question so the question i'm also going to tackle reads when one has power they should use it only for good but more often than not it is misused i'll repeat when one has power they should use it only for good but more often than not it is misused we are still looking at that story a man of awesome power and uh, so this story uh, this uh essay still revolves around our main character Taib, who was given awesome powers by god powers to do whatever he wanted to do whatever he wills to be will be it's like you just say let it be and then there would be so uh now uh to interpret my essay question yeah it shows that um when someone just the same words that Jarispa used. When someone finds themselves in an advantageous position, then they should use that position for the benefit of the society, for the benefit of the other people. But in most cases, what do these people do? They don't consider other people. They only consider their own selfish interests. So uh, when someone finds themselves in a, an advantageous, in a, in a, in an advantageous position, they only think about fulfilling their desires. They only think about uh, making their lives better uh, instead of uh, making the lives of other people as well as the society better. So simply you can just uh, summarize that into your conclusion. You can also use the conclusion that we used in the previous essay because in one way or the other, they are related. I'll go to a first point, the body. Remember? In our previous uh, sessions, we looked at the parts of an essay. So I am looking at the body. Our first topic sentence, or our first idea, is Taib uses his power for self-fulfillment. So uh, instead of using his power to benefit the society, Taib uses his power to fulfill his uh, self-interest. Uh, one, he drives uh, pleasure from causing pain to others. For this case, we can see the case of uh, the taxi driver. So after busting his tires in, a, in an effort to avenge for the taxi driver not stopping for him, when he passes past the taxi driver who is now desperate because he has no idea what has happened and now he has two flat tires, he says that he felt satisfied. He felt, he actually says that uh, that was the best punishment for the taxi driver. Also, uh, the broadcasters, uh, when he felt that the news they were broadcasting was unworthy, he would uh, make them sneeze, he would make them emit trills that are emitted by women, and he would also make them suffer from severe diarrhea. So it's like uh, he would, uh, after every time that he would stop a news anchor or announcer from broadcasting something that he considers unworthy, he would feel some sense of source of excitement or fulfillment mm -hmm. that uh, he has been able to see the news. There is actually somewhere in the book you're taught that in future he would be the one to see what is right and what is wrong in the media. Also, uh, after manipulating Suleiman to go and confess that he has not been paying tax as well as to go and pay up what he owned the government, clearly we are taught that he felt a sense of satisfaction. Uh, he felt contented and he felt uh, satisfied for all the things that he did. So at the end of every wrong that he did, there was some sort of satisfaction that he felt. So he uses his power to satisfy his own uh, feelings or to uh, acquire self-fulfillment. Point number two, Taib uses his powers to avenge or punish those people who wronged him. Uh, now we are using going to develop this uh, point 
you see in the case of the taxi driver. So he felt offended when the taxi driver does not stop for him. Remember now he has power, so he feels like a small god. So he was supposed to stop for him now that he has power. So he feels offended, he feels wronged by the taxi driver. So he uses this now to avenge or to punish him. So he uses his power looks at the rear uh, tires of this vehicle and they burst like a bomb. Uh, so it was uh, something that uh, he does to punish the taxi driver because uh, he resented, he resented his behavior for just speeding past him. Uh, our third point, I'll look at how uh, Taib uses his power to quench his immoral desires. Uh, at the park, uh, where yeah, after obtaining the guides from the various departments with the, the intention of making those departments better or making the society better, he sees a young beautiful girl. And from there, it's like his desires are awoken. He felt something that he has never felt for a long, long time, even with his own wife. So uh, what does he do? He wants to quench those desires. He wants to will that girl to fall in love with him because he desires that young woman. He forgets about his faith. He forgets about his teachings, uh, teaching story from the Quran. He forgets that he is a married uh, man and he has a, uh, he, he took an oath or he has promises uh, or commitment to his wife. So uh, he also does not bother to think about the feelings of this young woman because you are actually using your power to make her fall in love with you. She does not willingly fall in love with you. So what are you doing to her? What will become of a, um, a life after the encounter when now the, the powers wear off? That, like, that kind of a spell wears off. What will become of this woman? He does not consider all that. The only thing he thinks about is his own uh, immoral desires, which he wants to uh, quench. So uh, that is another, uh, another point whereby he uses his uh, powers, uh, not for the good, but for selfish reasons. Our point number four, the topic sentence is Taib powers uh, was a curse to some people. Uh, somewhere on page four, we are told uh, every place he worked, he was a curse and an affliction for some, as well as a blessing to others. So we are not given specific episodes here uh, from this statement, but every place he worked, he walked past, he would leave a curse or an affliction. He would cause pain to other people because he felt the need to be judgmental. He felt the need to play God. He felt the need to uh, make people for, pay for their crimes and for the wrongs that they were doing. Like he punishes also the man in the bus. He sees an argument between a man and a woman in the bus. He does not even try to find out what the argument was about, who was on the wrong, and uh, the right way to solve the situation or the problem. He goes ahead and uh, wills the man to have severe stomach cramps and uh, as a way of punishing him to an extent of the man being ferried to the hospital using an ambulance. So that clearly tells us that he was a curse uh, to some other people. The same, uh, we ca can also uh, use the case of the, the taxi driver to illustrate the same point. We can also use the case of the news broadcasters to also illustrate this point. So you can all use all those uh, uh, points to build up on this point as your supporting sentences or as your background information. So uh, our learners, that's uh, as far as the body of this uh, SE is concerned. So for the conclusion, you can just summarize, just like uh, uh, our teacher here, our lovely teacher Rispa has said, you can just uh, conclude by summarizing all the points that you have here, or you can just have a general conclusion. Uh, we taught you how to conclude in our last episode. So you can uh, just uh, come up with a, uh, a conclusion from the points that uh, we have discussed. And um, that's all we had for the essays. Uh, we still have more and more essays from all the other short stories that we have in a silent song and uh, discussed, clearly discussed and uh, uh, illustrated in our English uh, guru. So get a copy and uh, go through all those essays uh, for their preparation for the national exam. Uh,
Yes, before I conclude, teacher Rispa wants to say something. Okay, just to add to, how does a student know that they're on the right track? Every time you gain a point, please be making reference back to the question. As you're gaining that topic sentence, you go back to the question and ask yourself, am I answering, maybe for example, mm -hmm. power corrupts, and then in what way does it corrupt? Uh, example, you'll be talking about, he uses it to satisfy his selfish, uh, he, he uses it to satisfy his lustful feelings. Yeah. And then you go back to the question and, uh, and try to judge. Mm -hmm. Whatever I've written as my point, is whatever I've written as my point, is it answering the question? And also as a reminder, each point should be in a paragraph of its own. It's not supposed to be the work of the examiner mm -hmm. to be telling this point runs from this uh, this uh, this line up to the other line. Please demarcate your work very keenly by making use of the paragraphs. That is it that I wanted to add. Yeah, thank you, Teacher Rispa, for that addition. Now our learners, please go to Top uh, Top Notch Online TV and uh, press that subscribe button. Subscribe and you get all the education materials that you need for your revision, not only in English but also in all other subjects. Uh, for now, it's a bye-bye from us. Have a nice day.